And in doing so, we use different search terms, basically a manual of use to target documents in the client file. This effort yielded an additional set of approximately 6,800 documents and emails that were not produced during the client file transfer in July of 2019. Oh, Oh, (laughs) so General Flynn's own law firm, Covington, Covington apparently has 6,800 new documents and emails they never gave to his own new lawyer, despite the fact that they were his original lawyers. It's me scratching my head. Yeah. Look at that. Interesting how that happens. By the way, who works at Covington? Can we just show that photo, Covington? Uh, Who's at Covington? Who would be? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Eric H. Holder. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Eric H. Holder Jr., partner, Covington. He advises clients on complex investigations oh, yeah. to join the law firm after leaving the Obama administration. I'm, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. What if John Solomon in our interview show, John Solomon had this great line. Great investigative reporter. He said when he got to D.C. and started reporting on the inner workings of the swamp uh, years ago that a prominent uh, congressman or senator told him there are no coincidences in D.C. So Eric Holder's a partner at Covington. Now, fair enough, you may say to yourself, why hire Covington in the first place? Totally fair question. I don't disagree with you, and we shouldn't let that. It was probably, a re- not probably, it was clearly at this point a really awful decision. So just to set this up again, because this gets even more interesting. So now we know Sidney Powell's found out that their prior law firm clearly had some information they didn't want Mike Flynn to see, even though they were Mike Flynn's lawyers. We know they had a plan and a backup plan. Their plan was clearly to set them up with a Logan Act violation. How do we know that? Because the deputy attorney general, Sally Yates at the time, went to the now incoming uh, or excuse me, Trump White House, spoke to people at the White House and told them, hey, we got a problem with Mike Flynn. He may have been negotiating with the Russians when you were incoming. And that's a Logan Act violation, knowing it's a joke and no one's ever been successfully charged with that ever. And their backup plan, when they figured the Logan Act wasn't going to fly, Joe, was clearly, well, charge him with lying in an interview he didn't lie in. So now we have this FBI summary of the interview where they say he didn't lie, and it was suspiciously edited. Hmm. Nobody can seem to find the initial January 302 when they interviewed Flynn. They can only find edits, and one of them that appeared later in August was edited. What did that original one say? Oh, oh, oh. Did the original one say, hey, we interviewed Mike Flynn at the White House and he didn't lie? Ooh, that could kind of be big trouble. No, this case shockingly gets even worse. The great Margot Cleveland, again, excited, uh, excited extensively in my upcoming book for her chapter on Stephen Soma, which is fantastic. You may be saying, Stephen Soma, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great chapter. You're going to love this new one. Let's go to this Margot Cleveland article about another little problem with the Eric Holder partnered Covington law firm that represented Mike Flynn. Robert Mueller's case against Michael Flynn is about to implode. Margot Cleveland, April 27, 2020. This will be in the show notes. Please read this one. It is a doozy. Bongino.com slash newsletter. That is my show notes. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Those, the show notes are attached to the newsletter. Risk will be there. Please, please read this. It's good. Here's another little abnormality, Joe. In addition to the near 7,000 missing documents Covington just magically found, crazy. Margot Cleveland writes this. Check this out from the piece. There's this little line that's heavily redacted in the court documents. It says, we have a lawyer's unofficial understanding that they are unlikely to charge Junior in light of the cooperation agreement. And it's redacted. Over. Hold on to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that. So Cleveland writes, while alone, that reference may not have raised concerns of misconduct. The second excerpt suggests prosecutors sought to hide evidence from other defendants by keeping Mike Flynn Jr.'s deal a secret. Quote, the government, this is Sidney Powell, took pains to not to, uh, not to give a promise to defendant Flynn regarding Mike Jr. So as to limit how much of the benefit would have to disclose as part of its Giglio disclosures to any defendant against whom Mike Flynn Sr. may one day testify Flynn's attorney wrote. Let me translate all that's a lot, but it's really not. Yeah, please do. 
<laughs> so abnormality one, all of a sudden these missing emails are showing up. Gosh, we don't know where they were. We used the wrong search terms. <laughs> Golly. Now we find out that his own attorneys, the Eric Holder partnered Covington firm, that his own attorneys were hiding a side deal they made with the government. The side deal being this, that they wouldn't prosecute General Flynn's son, Mike Flynn Jr. If Flynn did X, why? Oh, having been a former federal agent here for 12 Mm. years of my life, this made perfect sense to me from the start. The Giglio case means you have to disclose these things to other defendants. Why, Joe? Mm -hmm. If I'm getting someone to testify against you in a bank robbery case, and to get them to testify, I make them a deal and say, I will reduce your sentence or I won't prosecute your family members if you testify against Joe. Mm -hmm. I have to disclose that to Joe's lawyers. Why? Because it's material. Because the jury needs to know it's not being done out of the kindness of my heart that I may have had an incentive to produce this information. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I may be lying to get out of jail too. Remember the Chris Rock thing about Juicy Small A? Because we knew you were lying. If you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. You have to disclose that. Judge. Johnny's testifying against Armacost in a bank robbery, but we have a deal with Johnny that we're not going to prosecute Johnny's sister on a bank robbery if Johnny testifies. <laughs> That's <laughs> not what happened here. Uh-huh. No, no, no. They cut a little side deal. The government. The government, same our government, prosecuting Mike Flynn, the same tyrants prosecuting him, cut a side deal with the Eric Holder partnered Covington and said, Shh, we're not going to say anything about this deal yet because we may need Flynn to testify against others. Oh, oh, others? Who could that be? Others? So you're trying to make Flynn, by promising him you won't prosecute his son, testify against others? Were those other Trump team people? Was it the turkey thing you were working on for a really long time? What was it exactly? But let's keep this little deal secret. So we don't have to disclose to those other defendants and the court that we cut a deal with Flynn. So it makes Flynn's testimony against others look even more legit. Ooh, (sighs) listen, ouch. I spent 12 years locking people up in the federal system and another uh, two to three locking up people in the New York City Police Department. I'm telling you, in my experience in cases, and I have a lot of it. This is a huge deal. Giglio violations, Brady violations, these are enormously serious. They are, I'm not kidding. Our court system has been broken. A lot of, this is one thing. Giglio violations and the failure to disclose this type of stuff is a career, it's a career ender, ladies and gentlemen. And if, in violation of some oath, can result in prosecutions. This is not a joke. These people, this law firm, is in a world of trouble. You cut a side deal with the government you didn't tell the court about? So it would look like Flynn's testimony against other defendants was done out of the purity of his heart and not because he cut a deal? Or was going to cut a deal? (laughs) Oh, man. You have no idea how bad this is. I hope that translation works. Audience referee yeah. Armacost, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that's what, easier than I thought that's it would that be. That's that segment. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You. Mm-hmm. you can read it in Margot Cleveland's piece. That is really, really bad. And now we see why those redactions are so heavy. They don't want you to know that. All right. Got a lot to cover. Uh, let me get to my second sponsor today. I got a video next. Um, I hate playing videos of me. You know I don't do it often, but when I do it, it matters, and it's I'm only playing a video because I don't want to regurgitate what I said. But I was on Hannity last night, and I have an important message for uh, Congress. So get that. Second, today's show also brought to you by our friends at My Patriot Supply. Ladies and gentlemen, preparedness matters. We ensure everything in our lives that matters. Everything. We ensure our cars. We ensure our health. You ensure you have dental insurance. We have eyeglass insurance. 
You have to ensure your food supply. Ensuring your food supply matters. Now is the time to do it. That's why we have our friends at My Patriot Supply. Listen, every day we are, we're just witnessing the spread of coronavirus. We're seeing the spread of fear, a lot of it being sown by people who are driving us nuts out there. It's driving markets down and demand for basic necessities through the roof. According to My Patriot Supply, they have older customers with health conditions petrified to go out living off their emergency food supply. Others are under self-quarantine. Some just don't want to face the mob for a loaf of bread. Go to preparewithdan.com. Reserve your two or four week emergency food kit today. I'm not kidding. I don't mess with people and sponsors and stuff for the sake of effect. I just bought, what is that, four, Paula? Four, four week supplies additional. I probably have about 10. Uh, I'm not kidding. I pay for them. I don't ask Patriot Supply for freebies. It matters that much to me. They're sitting in my closet in the next room. I kid you not. The meals include breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They last up to 25 years in storage, so you are prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, please ensure your food supply. It matters. It's the right and safe thing to do for you and your family. I have one, probably two or three, actually, for each member of my family. Patriot Supply has been a trusted partner for years, and they've been working around the clock to keep up with your orders. The current wait's now 8 to 12 weeks because the man has been 80 times normal. We have no idea how long this crisis will last, so it's important to be self-reliant. It's not too late. Go to preparewithdan.com, preparewithdan.com, preparewithdan.com today. I trust my friends at My Patriot Supply. Pick up a supply of emergency food today. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of putting up clips of myself. It always seems kind of ridiculous. Like, hey, look at me. I was on Hannity last night because I can say just uh, the same yeah. thing over again. Yeah, but yeah. Uh-huh. I don't want to <laughs> say the same thing over again. Um, I want to say it as I said it last night. Just a little background before I play this clip. So Sean and, and I was on my regular Tuesday night appearance with Geraldo. I'm on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Hannity. So I encourage you to always please DVR it if you can. And Sean brought up that Steny Hoyer, a lead Democrat in the House of Representatives, one of Nancy Pelosi's lieutenants, has said, you know, well, they're not coming back to work in the Congress, Joe, because it may be dangerous. You, wait, wait, you're what? I couldn't get it out of my head. Yeah. And although the segment was actually about something else, I, to Paula's chagrin, she doesn't like these segments, but too bad. This is the real me. This was me last night on Hannity about Congress sitting it out while all of us have to go back to work and get our jobs done and get our lives together. Check this out. Sean, can I mention one thing, too? That story in the beginning about Steny Hoyer, get your ass to work. Are Bingo. you kidding me? <laughs> you got the lady in Publix down the corner I go to has been busting her ass 12 hours a day, seven days a week for what? 10 bucks an hour? Get your ass to work. Are you kidding me? You just spent four trillion dollars. Ass up. Go to work. Are you kidding? Are these people for real? You're spending four trillion dollars bankrupting the company and your what? The woman but the in millionaires Publix have to go to, go to work, work too. Get the- your ass to work. You know, I wasn't kidding. Where I live, there's a Publix. You go out, you make a left, and it's not far down to Publix. It's a supermarket in Florida. Those of you in the South know it. There's a woman in the Publix here that I saw. I don't know how old she was, 20, 18. She's there a lot. She's putting her butt on the line to get to work to keep America fed. As Paula said this morning, and she's Trump's working. Mm -hmm. The cops are working. The nurses are working. We're working. The Supreme Court's working. The sanitation guys outside just picked up the garbage here on Monday morning. The town administrator's working where I live. You are not working? So just to be clear, you have face masks. You just allocated, the Congress allocated to themselves. Did you miss it in the porculus bill? Tens of millions of dollars for enhanced safety mechanisms around the House of Representatives and work from home measures. And you're not, what'd you do with them? Would you pocket it? Get your ass to work. Get your ass to work. Take your ass, get it to work. Get your ass to work. It's a disgrace. Put your mask on, put your gloves on, do the social distancing in your office and get your ass to work, you disgraceful human beings. My Secret Service friends are at work every day, working long hours. The president's at work every day. Get your ass to work. Get to work. I am really trying to hold back my anger to keep this show family friendly. Get your ass to work now. 